So to discover the first receptors or detectors of temperature, we really turned to the natural world and took advantage of the fact that um, some plants, like chili peppers, we all know elicit a common sensation of burning pain. Uh, and so we ask how the main pungent agent in chili peppers, something called capsaicin, interacts with our nervous system, our sensory nerve fibers, to generate a sensation of heat. And by identifying a receptor molecule on the surface of nerve cells that recognizes capsaicin, we discovered a protein that also turns out to play an important role in detecting heat. And the implications for this are, well, one, you know, sensory systems are really how we experience our natural world. You know, vision, taste, our sense of smell. It's really how we understand the world in which we live. And our sense of touch and our sense of pain is really an important part of that. So I think just because we're curious human beings and for basic curiosity-based research, we want to understand how these systems work. But they're also important for our survival, particularly pain sensation. If you don't have a normally functioning pain system, you really have a problem uh, avoiding things that could be injurious to you or recognizing when you have injuries from disease or from accidents. And so we need to understand how the system works so that we can know how we protect ourselves and also uh, it has implications for drug design. Of course, we all know that chronic pain is a big problem, undermanaged. And, um, and these kinds of studies, we hope, will provide insights that we can use to develop new types of analgesic drugs. Well, we took a similar approach to identifying a receptor for icy cold, and that is, again, we took advantage of the natural world. We all know that there are a lot of plants out there like mint leaves and eucalyptus leaves that have agents in them that produce a sensation of cool or cold or cooling. And, uh, of course, um, mint leaves produce menthol, which we all appreciate as a cooling agent. And so we ask how menthol activates nerve cells to generate this sense of cooling and uh, by doing that we identified a molecule another receptor on the surface of nerve cells that's also activated by cold so the same receptor that's activated by menthol is activated by cold and what was really fascinating about this is that that molecule is very closely related genetically to the to the receptor that we identified that's activated by capsaicin from chili peppers and by heat so together, these discoveries really told us that there's sort of a common theme and, and strategy that nature has used that enables our nervous system to detect changes in temperature through very similar but distinct molecules. Well, that's another similar story in a sense in that we use the natural world. So, um, you know, extracts from mustard have been used for many years uh, as an important um, uh, component of pain tests. So uh, oftentimes a physician or a scientist would rub what they call a tincture of mustard oil on somebody's hand. And what this does is it generates a sense of pungency and irritancy. So that tests your acute pain response but it also generates inflammation at that site, which makes the area more uh, um, sensitive to temperature and touch. So this was used as a model to understand mechanisms that are associated with inflammation and, and infl inflammatory pain, much as you would have in an arthritic joint. And so we ask how this so-called tincture of mustard oil works. This is really the same as looking at extracts from wasabi. And again, we identified a receptor on nerve cells uh, that is the mechanism through which wasabi and other uh, members of mustard uh, plants elicit their, uh, their sensation. And this is also similar to uh, uh, how we experience pain from a, uh, an onion. When you're chopping an onion and your eyes are watering and it's very painful, this is the same receptor that appreciates wasabi that also uh, is responsible for the pain that we associate with chopping an onion. And the relevance to this is that this receptor, which we call the wasabi receptor or TRYP-A1, uh, is really important for uh, what we call chemical pain or the sort of pain that's associated with tissue, again, tissue injury and inflammation. And by studying this receptor, we hope to understand more detailed mechanisms of how tissue injury generates not only acute, but persistent pain that leads to chronic pain syndromes.
Well, in terms of clinical utility, I think we all know, sadly, that there's a you know, uh, there's really a lack of analgesic drugs that we can use to treat pain. There's really two classes that we use for the most part. There's opioid type, you know, morphine type drugs, and then there's what we call non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, aspirin, ibuprofen, uh, and we really need to be able to tap into more sorts of drug types and mechanisms to treat a variety of pain syndromes. One, without the side effect of these other drugs, and two, there are certain types of pain that are refractory to treatment by um, by either opiates or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And so the work that we and many other people in this, la in, this, in this field have done is to now discover new molecules that could serve as targets for novel types of, of uh, pain drugs that we hope will um, treat some of these refractory pains and, and have a different side effect profile or no side effects, hopefully, uh, compared to opiates and NSAIDs. Um, in terms of clinical trials, you know, it's still early days. Uh, um, there are a number of pharmaceutical houses around the world that have developed drugs that target the receptors for capsaicin, for menthol, for wasabi. Uh, and, you know, we're waiting to see how that goes. Uh, drug discovery is a complex, long-term process, but we're hopeful that one or more of these sites will turn out to be a target for a drug that hopefully we can take for things like osteoarthritic knee pain, for uh, visceral pain like bladder pain or, or intestinal pain, et cetera. So, um, you know, it's really through basic research that one can make advances in this field. Uh, and uh, that's what our goal is.